I know you wanted to take some time off. How is it feeling? Are you itching to get back, or are you you on a good pace right now? Yeah, I'm, I'm ready to get back in there. I've been ready for about three months now, but I'm trying to bide my time and trying to, you know, invest some more time in the gym and just, to, you know, improve a little bit so when I come back, people can see a difference. The welterweight division in the UFC is the most exciting one, it seems, right now. We just had two outstanding fights, uh, or very controversial, with Carlos Condit and Nick Diaz. And then we had that fantastic fight that should have gone five rounds last night with uh, Sanchez and Ellenberger. What do you think about the talent that's in there, and could you take on any of those guys? I could take on any of them. Yeah, I think the division's all up in the air, to be honest, and I think that anybody can beat anybody on, the, on any given night. You know, I mean, if, if those guys had fought five rounds last night, it may have been different. And... The Condit Diaz fight, you know, that could have gone either way. I actually scored it to Diaz, but maybe I'm a little biased because I don't like Condit too much. Um, but, you know, th there are so many good matchups in the division right now. Uh, I'm kind of sad to be out of the mix at the moment, but when I get back in there, I get a few wins together and start moving back up there. I might have missed something because Carlos Condit seems to be a pretty likable guy. Uh, what's going on between you two? Well, I, you know, I fought him one time and he beat me. It's the only knockout loss in my career and, you know... That's the only reason not to like him? Uh, well, no, he's, he's boring. He's not interesting at all. Nick Diaz entertains me. You know, he's a, he's a fan favorite. Whether you love him or you hate him, you want to watch him fight. Whereas Carlos Condit's just kind of non-existent. He's just not interesting and not exciting and kind of boring. What do you think about drug use, marijuana use, uh, in the UFC or in MMA? Do you think that they should be tested? Do you think it's not fair to be tested? I think it's a massive subject, and I think there are a lot of factors, uh, you know, to consider. Um, as far as a performance-enhancing drug, uh, I, I just don't, I don't see how it fits into that category. Now, people say it might have slowed him down, uh, but also I've heard that perhaps it can make you feel better and you don't feel those hits so much. And, and Nick is a guy that can really take punches. Do you think that, that maybe the marijuana can help in that, or that's just a myth? I, I think that's just a myth. I, I really do. I mean, the only thing I can really see it give an advantage on is maybe... You know, people struggle with nerves, and I, and I can see it helping with that anxiety. And, and maybe a little bit with, uh, you know, I, I know it has a lot of good effects on, um, you know, sore muscles and joints and things like that. It helps, you know, take down swelling and stuff. So I think there's a lot more research needs to be done in it before it can just be put in a, a banned category. And, you know, like things like, you know, you can't compare it to steroids for an advantage. It's just, it's, they're completely, completely separate. So I think we need a lot more research and a lot of people start to be honest about it, really. So, so bottom line, a yay or nay on a marijuana testing? I don't think it should be tested for, no. I think people should have the right to choose whatever they do with the body. And uh, I mean, you know, a, a, an unfair advantage like steroids, fair enough, but a recreational drug, are we going to ban alcohol next? I mean, I haven't drank for 12 years, but I wouldn't feel like I was at a disadvantage if my opponent was drunk, you know? It doesn't make, don't make any sense to me. Well, thank you for talking to us, Dan. Uh, have a good time tonight, and we can't wait to see you back in the cage. Thank you.